plus the boy who says he's been to heaven writes a new book for kids we'll talk to him after your local news and weather all right also ahead do you believe in heaven we're going to introduce you to a little boy who may make a believer out of you he emerged from life-saving surgery when he was just four years old and told a very detailed tale of having been to heaven and met relatives it's an extraordinary story they wrote a book and now he's got a new book it's for kids and so we're going to catch up with the family in a couple of minutes well, the story of a little boy's near-death experience and what he described as a trip to heaven quickly turned into a best-selling book. Heaven is for Real has spent the past 52 weeks on the New York Times bestsellers list, including 44 weeks at number one. And now the family who brought it to us is out with the children's version called Heaven is for Real for Kids. And Todd, Sonia, and Colton Burpo are with us this morning. Good morning to all of you. It's good to see you again. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let's recap for those who aren't familiar with the book, although it has spent so much time at the top of the best sellers when Colton was four years old he had a burst appendix uh, appendix had several surgeries and having come through that he started telling you guys about having seen heaven what did he say Todd well I think his you know stories have been incredible he could see us where we were in the hospital while he was in surgery so that first grabbed our attention because those facts we didn't know how he knew them and then he goes on to talk about a sister he met in heaven, my grandfather. Then, of course, he tells us what God looks like. And then the only painting of Jesus that he's ever said is right. Uh, the information that he shares is just pretty incredible. And, Sonia, one of the things that really stood out to you was that Colton seemed to know things that you had never told him. I and mean, after all, he was only four years old at the time. Yeah, he told us like, about our miscarried daughter and about a grand great-grandfather he'd never met and, and various other things. And Colton, it's been eight years now. It's a long time for anybody. Do you still have those vivid memories of heaven? Um, yes, I do. And what stands out most in your mind? What can you really still see? Well, the things I remember most are my family members and Jesus. Do you uh, worry at all that those memories will get fuzzier and fuzzier over time? That happens to everybody. Um, no, I think the those memories are implanted. You know, let's address the skepticism because I know you're familiar with it and I guess it has two parts. On the one hand, some people are just, they, they want to believe yeah. this. Who wouldn't want to believe it? But they wonder, could it really be true that someone so young could actually see heaven and live to tell about it? What's your response to them? Well, we questioned our son at first, but I think uh, as parents, everyone can tell when their four-year-old is telling the truth. And when they're telling, telling you things that they cannot make up, we're just close enough to really verify the story. And for people that are farther away, we understand that. But we also see all the people that are finding peace and hope and comfort from Colton's story. So for those people that might even be against the story, we just kind of look past them and see all the people that are getting peace and hope. And it's, it's, it's incredible to have ideas. What do my loved ones look like? How am I going to meet them? What's it going to be like? And for them to hear that and, and to have peace, that's what we focus on. It's an amazing perspective to start thinking in those terms. And yet, I think the other criticism would be, well, you wrote a book about it. Now we've got the kids' book. I hear a movie may be in the works. So for those who are sitting back there at home and saying, gosh, is this all about getting a profit? What would your response be, Simon? Uh, no, it's not about that. Um, we were just going to share the story. And um, God bless the story. And a lot of people have found um, different parts in it, they, they, they felt um, a, a hurt and were touched by it. And so that wasn't our intention. Our intention was just to write and help a few people and it's just it kind of exploded. And the kids book we were super thrilled about. Yeah, Colton, I know uh, now people that your age can read it. Are you pretty excited about that, about sharing your story? Well, actually the book really isn't for my age. I'd say the adult version is more their age mm -hmm. but kids four through eight it's a 32 page picture book yeah. so it works for them pretty good because the wording's easy pictures describe the story all right well it's wonderful to have you here have you thought about who might play you in the movie i mean everybody likes that I game know, i have no clue yeah. <laughs> i think those two already have a um a few people that they already have but <laughs> i don't yeah. all right well i have to be pretty, someone pretty good to play you colton thank you so much Tanya and todd great to have you with us thank once you. again the book is heaven is for real for kids and a live performance from the hit band hot shell ray coming up after your local news and He's the little boy behind the best-selling phenomenon, 
It was so vivid. I wanted to tell them right away. His story of a trip to heaven. This proves what he saw was real. The tale of a near-death experience and the journey of a lifetime. Coming up. I was up above and I could see my mom. Their son said he had gone to heaven for real. What was your initial gut reaction? Shock. Is heaven for real? There may be many doubting Thomases, but millions of Americans are buying it. The astounding tale of a little boy's journey to heaven. It's launched a best-selling book and a movie's now in the works. Well, tonight, listen to his story. Do you believe heaven is for real? Here is Hoda Kotb. Heaven, well, some people think it's in the sky. It's above where the rain and the snow falls. God's up there. Lots of little kids imagine what heaven is like. I think it would look like a giant bed. I guess a little town, but not skyscrapers. More like a world of angels but this is a story of a little boy who says he knows it's real it was March of 2003 and three-year-old Colton Burpo had suddenly become gravely ill his parents Todd and Sonia rushed him to a hospital near their home in Imperial Nebraska when it was the worst of it what were you afraid of well um, Colton and I are very tight, <laughs> so I was going to lose my buddy. Days passed without a diagnosis. Then, after nearly a week, an answer. Colton was suffering from a ruptured appendix. His prognosis was not good. When they took him to surgery, you know, he was screaming for me. Daddy, make him stop. Yeah. Why are you letting him do this to me? Two hours of worry and prayer passed before Todd and Sonia were told their little boy was going to be okay. When they were done with the surgery, I was screaming for my dad because I wanted to tell him that I almost died. In the days and months that followed, Todd and Sonia say they saw their son coming back to life. Back were the stories about cowboys and superheroes and the squabbles with older sister Cassie. But there was one new addition to Colton's rampant chatter, Colton, who was now 12, began saying something amazing had happened to him while he was in the hospital. He said he had actually gone to heaven. I wanted to tell them right away because it was so vivid, mm -hmm. but they really didn't listen until four months after <laughs> the surgery. It took them a while to pay attention? Yeah. You're driving down the street with your son, and you see the hospital, and you ask him, hey, buddy, you want to go back there? What was his response to that? You know, Jesus had the angels sing to me because I was so scared. I remember looking at my wife. She's looking at me. Her eyes are probably about this big. My, I'm like, hey, Colton, you said Jesus was in the hospital. He goes, yeah, Dad, he was. Well, where was he? Well, Dad, I was sitting on his lap. In his characteristic, matter-of-fact way, Colton told his parents that while he was in surgery, angels came down and flew him to heaven. It looked like a city that just kept growing. There was a lot of colors up there, and there were a few colors that you can't even name because we haven't seen them before. You'd expect a lot of people in heaven to be old. Is that what you saw when you looked around? No. I saw young men and women. Did you see anyone you recognized? Well, I remember seeing Jesus. He had really pretty blue eyes. He had a rough, kind face, mm -hmm. brown hair, and a smile that was brighter than any other smile that I've seen. Now, talking about Jesus was not uncommon for Colton. After all, he had grown up in a religious home. Grace at dinner, Bible stories at bedtime, not to mention that his father is a pastor. But Todd and Sonia say what Colton was describing now had little to do with religion. He was talking about things he could not have possibly known about like where his parents were while he was in surgery. I was up above and I could see my mom in one room praying and I could see my dad in this room all by himself and he's, he was also praying. And what his great-grandfather looked like as a young man. 
He had curly brown hair, and he was pretty big. Todd says Colton got it right, even though he had never seen a picture of him. What's even more surprising? Colton said he met the sister he never even knew he had. When she recognized me, she came out and gave me this big hug. She actually looked like my sister Cassie, but with dark brown hair. And then she told me that she died in my mom's stomach. You had miscarried mm -hmm. um, and had never told Colton about it. I think miscarriage is a kind of a silent hurt. What was your initial gut reaction to him saying that? A shock. No matter how they reasoned it, Todd and Sonia say they could not find a plausible explanation as to how Colton knew what he knew. We did pray and talk about Jesus a lot yeah, at home, did. but who implanted that memory in his mind? This proves what he saw was real. So Todd began sharing Colton's story with members of his congregation, and within no time, the tale of a little boy who said he went to heaven began to spread like wildfire. Did people encourage you to write it? Did they say you should put that? A lot of people would come to the door yeah. and they'd, they'd show up. God told me to tell you to write a book. I'd mm -hmm. say thank you, now go away. <laughs> Eventually, Todd says he realized the healing power of Colton's story and the book, Heaven is for Real, was born. It has become something of a phenomenon, shooting to the top of the New York Times bestseller list and selling more than four million copies since its debut in November. What do you say to critics? You're a pastor, you're God-loving. I mean, couldn't this have all been all the things that have accumulated over those three years that just sort of came out? Well, you know, a lot of people said you've taught him this, and, and I wish I was that good. His understanding of, of God is so beyond what most adults are. Mm -hmm. I didn't teach him that. What do you do if, if someone does come up and say, Colton, I don't believe what you're saying? Well, I'll say, okay, you can believe what you believe, but I still got my memories, and I got a book about it. Did you want to stay up there? Yes, because it was just this wonderful place. But if I stayed up there, I wouldn't be right here right now talking to you.